the God of Jacob. The God of Jacob. Every word of God is divinely ordained. And I know that you are here for a purpose today to hear this word because God needs to speak directly to your soul. Please pay attention. What you need to hear may be different from what your neighbor needs to hear. But I can guarantee you God himself will speak directly into your situation in Jesus' name. The God of Jacob See, Simon, that God gave to me to deliver specifically to encourage someone today. Number one, learn to be still. I sense in my spirit that there might be some of you that are worried, you are confused. Maybe you are dejected. Maybe you are angry. But the word of God to you this morning is be still. Be still because God is still on your case. Be still because you are not the one that will make the decision. In Psalm 46 verse 10, when the Lord says, be still and know that I am God. He knows that there is a temptation for human beings to want to force the solution. After you have tried everything you can and it appears you are not getting the result you want, you want to force the solution. You want to force it to happen. But the word of God to you this morning is be still. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 if we put it on the screen, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Say, so, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, everything that you know in Christianity, apply it, that you may be able to stand on the evil day. The evil day simply means the day that are not going according to your plan. The season of your life that does not appear to be pleasant. And having done all to, to stand. To stand also means to continue to fast. To continue to serve God fervently and faithfully. And having done that, to wait in faith. I pray for somebody here, you will not wait in vain in Jesus' name. I say it one more time, you will not wait in vain in Jesus' name. And as you wait in faith, you stand strong in hope, knowing that your tomorrow will be all right. How many of you believe that your tomorrow will be all right? And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Number two, God has the final say. God has the final say. And as a reason God said in Psalm 46 verse 10, when it says, be still, after that it says, I know that I am God. So God is not asking you to be still for nothing. He's saying, leave the matter to me. Leave the matter to me. And I believe God was preparing me for this message a few days ago, maybe three or four days ago. I found it difficult to sleep. I just discovered <laughs> I've been lying on the bed for how many hours I can't sleep. I was thinking about something. And then the Holy Spirit whispered in my heart. He said, remember this, remember this, remember all these problems? Were you the one that solved it? <laughs> Within a few minutes after that, I slept. God was saying to me, if he was the one that gave me victory in all those ones, why am I worried now? I'm praying for somebody. The God that has helped you before, we help you again in Jesus' name. I say it one more time. The God that has helped you before, 
we help you again in Jesus' name. Proverbs 19, verse 21. Proverbs 19, 21. Say, many are the thoughts in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of God that alone shall stand. You see, it does not matter what people are thinking about you. It does not matter what they are planning about you. The Bible says it is only the counsel of God that shall stand. I join my faith with yours. Every thought, every plan, every action that is contrary to the will of God concerning you shall not stand. Everything that anyone may be doing that is not according to the plan of God for your life, it shall fail in Jesus' name. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Say, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, see the Lord, the thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Sometimes you look at your life and it doesn't appear things are going in the right direction. Hold on. Hold on. God has the final say. The way your life is now does not mean that is the way it will end. God is working on your life. God is working on your situation. And his plan towards you shall surely be established in Jesus' name. I prophesy upon your life. You will fulfill destiny. Yeah. I say it one more time. You will fulfill destiny. Yeah. The plan and the purpose of God for your life shall be fulfilled. Yeah. And whatever pain that you may be experiencing today, very soon may you turn to praise. Yeah. And whatever sorrow you are going through, very soon may it be replaced with joy. Number three, stay on the side of the Lord. You see, as you wait for his plan to be fully perfected in your life, it's very important that you stay on the Lord's side. And you will notice that in this point, I listed so many things on the screen so that you will not forget to pay attention. As you wait for your time of visitation, as you wait for your time of victory, as you wait for your time of testimony, stay on the Lord's side. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10 says, Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with him. But that blessing is only unto the righteous. I don't know what challenge you are facing. But in the mighty name of Jesus, nothing will take you away from the Lord's side. There are some temptations that may come. But do everything to resist those temptations. Resist the temptation to backslide into sin. See, as you are waiting on the Lord, you are believing God for a blessing. It's a very dangerous time. Because that is when the enemy can come and say, well, you see, you've been praying, nothing is working. You've been fasting, nothing is working. You, you've been believing God, nothing is working. And then you slide into sin. But in the mighty name of Jesus, God himself will keep you on his side in Jesus' name. Resist the temptation to give up hope. Resist it. Because if there is life, there is hope. And the person who is broke today can be rich tomorrow. The person who is sick today can be healed tomorrow. The person who is crying today may be dancing tomorrow. Resist the temptation to give up hope. The moment you say it cannot happen, you've already sentenced yourself to a life of sorrow. 
I'm believing God for you. That you will not surrender hope in Jesus' name. I say this one more time. You will not surrender hope in Jesus' name. And I resist the temptation to grow cold. Resist the temptation to grow cold. Remember the story of Anna. The Bible says she waited and waited and waited and waited for a long time for a child. Nothing came. But she kept on going to Shiloh anyway. She kept on going anyway. She kept on going anyway. She kept on going anyway. Even though she still had not received her petition. I pray for you. You will never grow cold in Jesus' name. In the place of prayer, you will not grow cold. In the place of studying the world, you will not grow cold. In the place of working for him, you will not grow cold. In the place of believing, you will not grow cold. Wait on the Lord. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Psalm 46, verse 11. Let's turn to it very quickly. Psalm 46, verse 11. We'll put it on the screen. See, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Think about that passage for a moment. When God says, be still and know that I am God, he followed it up with this assurance for his people that he is with them. How many of you believe that God is with you? You honestly believe that the almighty God is with you. If so, you will laugh last in Jesus' name. Say, the Lord of hosts is another name for the commander of the heavenly army. Whenever you see in the Bible, the Lord of hosts is referring to the commander of, of the heavenly army. And if the commander of the heavenly army is with you, you know that no matter the battle you are going through, you will prevail. I say you will prevail in Jesus' name. All those that are seeking your downfall, they will fail. All those that are seeking your stagnation, they will fail. All those that are seeking your sorrow, they will fail. The Lord of hosts himself will arise and fight for you in Jesus' name. You know, this message is so timely. Because even I can sense there are many of you that are carrying some bodies in your heart. But it's time for you to shift and allow the Lord of hosts to take over the battle. When uh, Judah went to God, he said, God, <laughs> we can't go on anymore. The battle ahead of us is too much. He sent a, a prophet to them, said, tell them, the battle is not theirs, but... Why? I don't know if you still want to keep fighting the battle on your own. I don't know if you are ready to surrender it to the Lord. Then rise on your feet and say, Father, please take over the battles of my life. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. Take over the battles of my life. Fight for me. Give me victory. Talk to the Lord. You cannot handle it on your own. Say the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Father, take over. Take over the battle of my life. I cannot handle it on my own. Arise for me. Father, help me. Make a way for me. I surrender it all unto you. Fight the battles of my life, oh God. Fight the battles of my life. And give me victory. Give me victory. You are the Lord of hosts. You are the mighty one in battle. Take over. Take over the battle of my life. And give me victory. In Jesus mighty name we are prayed. May the Lord of hosts take over the battles of your life. May he give you victory. And may you dance a dance of celebration. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. Take your seat. Number four. And the heart of the message itself. Call on the God of Jacob. Call on the God of Jacob. Because when that word of encouragement came to his people, that they should be still and know that God is on their case. The passage ended by saying, the God of Jacob is with us. What does God of Jacob mean? Number one, God of Jacob means the God of mercy. The God of mercy. There are many people that will say, ah, but Jacob was a deceiver. Oh, Jacob was a con man. They forget that the God of Jacob is the God of mercy. In spite of everything that Jacob did, the mercy of God still made him to fulfill destiny. I prophesy upon your life. Whatever you may have done that has become an obstacle to you, May the God of mercy make a way for you in Jesus' name. The God of Jacob is a God of mercy. The mercy that cannot be changed. When you study Romans chapter 9, verse 13 to 15, it talks about the God of Jacob. It said, before Jacob was born, God already decided that this man, this boy, will enjoy my mercy. Romans 9, verse 13 to 5. Let's put it on the screen. Romans 9, 13 to 15. Romans 9, 13 to 15. You will see the God of mercy expressing his mercy, his mercy for Jacob. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I the children have not been born yet. But God has already started loving Jacob even before birth. Verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there any unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And God decided before Jacob was born that this is the one on whom I will have mercy. I pray for you from the bottom of my heart that the God of Jacob will show mercy on you. The God of Jacob will show compassion on you. Whatever it is that you have done that is working against your joy, the mercy of God will overturn in Jesus' name. You call a God upon the God, the God of Jacob because the God of Jacob is also the God of final say. He's the God of final say. Why do we say so? Even though God had decided before the children were born that Jacob, the younger one, is the one that will be the covenant child. His father decided to transfer the promise. His father decided to transfer the blessing to Esau. But the God of Jacob is the God of finance. Once he has spoken, nobody can overrule him. As much as Isaac tried to transfer the blessing to someone else, the God of Jacob had his way. I pray and prophesy upon your life. Everyone that is trying to transfer your blessing, may the God of Jacob overrule them. <laughs> Isaac stood in the position of authority in the life of Jacob because a father has authority over his child. And by the order of things, when your own father makes a pronouncement, it carries a lot of weight. But the God of Jacob overruled his father. Anyone that is standing in authority in your life, 
and is trying to prevent your progress. May God Almighty overrule them. Amen. Everyone that is stronger than you, stronger than you, and they are trying to use their influence to prevent your joy. May God Almighty overrule them. Amen. Anyone in position of authority over your life that has become a wall of Jericho, may God Almighty pull thee down. Amen. The God of Jacob is a God of victory. Is a God of victory. Jacob went through all kinds of obstacles. When you see Genesis chapter 27 verse 41, you will understand why the point is saying call on the God of Jacob. Because after Esau came back and Esau discovered that the blessing that the father wanted to transfer to him has been given to Jacob. He made up his mind that this Jacob will not live to inherit the promise. Let's open to Genesis 27 verse 41. Genesis 27 verse 41. You will see what Esau said concerning Jacob. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father has blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, where? And this will let you know that even the things in your heart, God can see it clearly. Esau did not tell anybody. But he made a decision in his heart that after he has finished mourning his father, he will kill Jacob. Hear him. He said, he said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. And then will I slay my brother? After I finish mourning my father, I will kill Jacob. But the God of Jacob is the God of victory. You are going to rise on your feet and say, I refuse to die before my time. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. I refuse to die before my time. The God of Jacob, please fight for me. Say, I will kill Jacob. But he could not kill Jacob. I refuse to die before my time. He said, after he has mourned his father, he will kill Jacob. But the God of Jacob is the God of victory. I refuse to die. I refuse to die before my time. Cry to your father. You will not die before your time. You will not die before your time. The God of Jacob is the God of victory. Everyone plotting your downfall shall fail in the mighty name of Jesus. You will live to see to fulfill destiny. You will live to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. You will live to see the joy of your children. You will live to see the joy of your children, children. Cry upon the God of Jacob. The God of victory. Lord, everyone trying to send me to the grave early. Father, arise and fight for me. I refuse. I refuse to die before my time. The number of my days I will fulfill. The number of my days I will fulfill. Every blessing lying ahead of me, I will possess. I will see the joy of my children. I will see the joy of my children, children. I refuse to go to the grave before my time. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. 
May the God of Jacob that frustrated the plans of Esau, may that God of Jacob fight for you in Jesus' name. The number of your days you will fulfill. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Please take your seat. When the sermon says, call on the God of Jacob, it's because the God of Jacob is a God of favor. Is a God of favor. When you study the life of Jacob, you will <laughs> understand that Jacob was not an ordinary man. The Bible said he served in the house of Laban. And whatever he touched, prospered. Anything that Jacob touched, prospered. That was the anointing that was transferred to Joseph. That's why Joseph prospered at home. Joseph prospered in slavery. Joseph prospered in prison. Everywhere he went, he prospered because the God of Jacob was with him. I want you to read Genesis 30 verse 27, if you can open to it. You will see what Laban said concerning Jacob. Genesis 30 verse 27. Because Jacob said to him, I have served you enough. It's time to let me go. Laban, I have been serving you for many years. It's time to let me go. Laban said unto him, Abba, Jacob, I pray thee, if I have found favor in your sight, stay with me longer. For I have learned, I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for... Laban said to Jacob, I have discovered that it is because you are with me that God has favored me. I prophesy upon your life that the God of Jacob, the God of favor, will favor you in Jesus' name. May the God of Jacob prosper the works of your hands. And wherever you go, whatever you do, may God favor it. Why don't you rise on your feet and say, the God of Jacob, please favor me. Favor me. Laban said, I have learned, I have found out that you are the reason God is blessing me. Jacob, you are the reason why God has favored me. Call on the God of Jacob. The God of favor. Father, please favor me. Father, favor me. You are the God of Jacob. You are the God of favor. Bless the works of my hands. Wherever I go, whatever I do, please favor me. Because Jacob was in the house of Laban, you bless the house of Laban. I call upon you, the God of Jacob. Please favor me. Please favor me. Please favor me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. May the God of Jacob favor you in every aspect of your life. Whatever you lay your hands upon, may he prosper. Wherever you go, may you find favor. Whoever you meet, may you find favor. Every door of opportunity that you knock, may you find favor. May favor look for you. May favor dwell with you. May favor abide with you forever. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And finally, when the word of God says, call upon the God of Jacob, he's saying, call upon the covenant-keeping God. The God of Jacob means a lot. Jacob was not an ordinary human being. 
It was somebody that came with a covenant. And there was nothing that anyone could do to prevent Jacob from fulfilling divine purpose. The Bible said in Romans chapter 9 verse 10 to 12. Let's open to it and then we pray and close the sermon. Romans chapter 9 verse 10 to 12. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children not yet born, let me emphasize that, they have not been born at all. Neither have they done any good or evil. They have not been born, they have not done anything. That the purpose of God according to election might stand. Not of works, but of him that call it. Verse 12, the promise. It was said unto the woman, this baby have not been born, but the elder shall serve the younger. Jacob was the younger. He was blessed right in the womb before doing anything good or evil. And there is nothing any human being can do to stop the promise of God concerning him. So I close this sermon by saying, as you call on the God of Jacob, the covenant-keeping God, what God has destined concerning you, no one shall be able to stop in the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, rise on your feet and say, the covenant-keeping God, I call upon you, fulfill your promise concerning me. Talk to the Lord. The covenant keeping God. The promise keeping God. You kept your promise unto Jacob. Father, keep your promise concerning me. You kept your covenant with Jacob. Keep your covenant concerning me. I will fulfill purpose. I will fulfill destiny. No matter what I'm going through right now, I am going to fulfill destiny. Because the God of Jacob is my God. The covenant keeping God is my God. I will fulfill destiny. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I declare upon your life that the God of Jacob, the covenant-keeping God, shall keep his promise concerning you. He shall keep his covenant concerning you. No one shall be able to stop your blessing. No one shall be able to obstruct your destiny. It doesn't matter what you are going through right now. You will laugh last. I say it one more time, you will laugh last. I decree it, you will laugh last. And so shall it be. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, shout a loud hallelujah. God bless you, you can take your seat. You are here this morning, you are saying, Pastor, please pray for me especially. I want to surrender my life to this God. This God of Jacob, I want to surrender my life to him. I am tired of struggling on my own. I want to put my life in the hands of Jesus. The choir will take the song. He has promised he will never fail. So if you are that person, you want to surrender your life to the God of Jacob, please come. I want to pray with he you specially. He has promised God bless you. He will never Stop fail. struggling on your own. Stop struggling on your own. I will follow Just come. Keep coming. Keep coming. I will follow him. He has promised. He has promised. He has promised.
things God bless you. Let's clap for them. Never fail. Keep coming, keep coming. His faithfulness. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Keep coming. He's forevermore. His faithfulness. Keep coming, keep coming. He's forevermore. Oh, he has promised. He has promised. Keep coming, keep coming. He will never fail. I will never fail. I will follow him. Thank you, my brother. Keep coming. I will follow Jesus. He has promised. He has promised. He will never fail. He will never fail. He will never fail. believe that my, there are still many people uh, that I don't know why you are still shy but the Bible passage we read says be still and know that I am God in other words stop struggling on your own surrender your life to the God who has the final say so I'll make the call one more time you are there you say pastor please pray for me I want to turn over my life to this God Please come, I want to pray for you. Come, let's clap for them as they come. He has Thank promised you. he will never fail. He will never I fail you. Will follow. I will follow him. I will follow him. I will follow him. Thank you, Jesus. He has promised. He has promised. He will never fail. front just say after me my Lord Jesus I surrender my life to you I am tired of struggling on my own save me help me fulfill your promise concerning me in Jesus mighty name we are prayed it is well with you the God almighty will save you it will help you and you will fulfill your destiny in Jesus name Please go with my sister waving unto you. Congratulations. Let's clap for him. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And then I'll make this last call uh, before I leave. Point number three says, stay on the Lord's side. Stay on the Lord's side. It's possible as you have been believing God, maybe you have backslided into sin maybe you have surrendered hope you've given up hope or maybe you have grown cold God asks me to encourage you that all will be well please come I want to pray for you if you are in any of those three categories you are backslided you've surrendered hope or you've grown cold just come he, he will fulfill his promise. promise. Thank you, Jesus. He come, will come, come. never come. fail. Thank. Keep coming. I will God bless you. God bless you. Him. I will follow him. He will keep his promise. Keep coming. Keep coming. He has promised. He will God bless never you. fail. Keep coming. Keep coming. He's Thank 
Thank you, Jesus. Keep coming, keep coming. Jesus has promised. He has A few days ago, the Lord showed us something in a dream about what is to happen. Actually, a particular individual. You may be in that situation. Temptations are flashing in your heart, flashing in your mind. Or maybe you have already even gone into it. You are the one God is talking about. Please return to the Lord. He will still keep his promise concerning you. Please come. I want to make that call one for the last time. Please come. You are backsliding or you are thinking of it. Please come. Come. Thank you, Jesus. I will wait for you. I wait for you. Come. Come. I will follow. I will follow. Father, those of you in front, go ahead and say, Father, please have mercy on me. Help me to remain on your side. As I wait for my time, help me to remain firmly on your side. Save me from every temptation. Don't let me surrender hope. And don't let me grow cold. Go ahead. If you are joining them, join them. Father, have mercy on me. Keep me on your side. I know it shall be well with me as I remain on your side. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I pray for every one of you in whatever way and those of you joining us online, in whatever ways you may have backslided, may God of mercy restore you in Jesus' name. And from today, may you flee from every appearance of evil. And just in case you have surrendered hope, by the reason of this sermon, may God renew your hope. And if you have grown cold, may God make you to be fervent once again. You will fulfill destiny and you will laugh last. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you.